Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question on relative motion and special relativity, discussing what's known as the postulates of special relativity and performing a calculation on length contraction, among other things. This question is from the 2016 CFE Higher paper. Two students are in an airport building on their way to visit CERN. Very lucky. I'd love to go to CERN. The first student steps onto a moving walkway which is travelling at 0.83 metres per second relative to the building. This student walks along the walkway at a speed of 1.20 metres per second relative to the walkway. The second student walks alongside the walkway at a speed of 1.80 metres per second relative to the building. We're then asked to determine the speed of the first student relative to the second student. So this is the first student, the one on the right, and this is the second student. If you were standing in the airport building and saw both students go by, the speed of the first student relative to you would be 0.83 meters per second. That's the speed of the walkway, plus 1.2 meters per second, their walking speed on the walkway. That means that relative to you, or relative to the building, student one has a speed of 2.03 meters per second. Student two has a speed relative to the building of 1.8 meters per second. To work out the speed of student 1 relative to student 2, we have to imagine that student 2 is stationary. To do that, we'd have to add a velocity of 1.8 metres per second to the left to student 2. Finally, we'd also have to add a velocity of 1.8 metres per second to the left to student 1. Taking right as positive, this means that the speed of the first student relative to the second student is 2.03 plus negative 1.8 which is 0.23 metres per second. Since we're asked for speed and not velocity, we don't need to give a direction here. Part B says, On the plane, the students discuss the possibility of travelling at relativistic speeds. The students consider the plane travelling at 0.8 c relative to a stationary observer. The plane emits a beam of light towards the observer. We're then asked to state the speed of the emitted light as measured by the observer. Justify your answer. So, of course, this question catches a lot of people out. You might think that someone on the plane would measure the speed of light as 3 times 10 to the power of 8 metres per second, but a stationary observer would measure a greater speed, the speed of light plus the speed of the plane. This isn't the case, though. If you've watched this video, then you'll have heard me state the two postulates of special relativity. Firstly, that the laws of physics are the same in inertial reference frames, and secondly, that the speed of light in a vacuum is the same in inertial reference frames. Now, as long as the plane isn't accelerating with respect to the stationary observer on Earth, as long as they're moving with constant velocity relative to one another, then the plane and the Earth are inertial reference frames. That means that the stationary observer also measures the speed of light to be 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. To justify your answer, we just have to say that the speed of light is the same for all inertial reference frames. It sounds like a simple statement to make, but it has some far out consequences. Here's B part 2. According to the manufacturer, the length of the plane is 71 metres. Calculate the length of the plane travelling at 0.8c as measured by the stationary observer. Firstly, 0.8c means that the plane is moving at 0.8 times the speed of light. Remember the students are just imagining the plane travelling at this speed, as physics students often do. The other thing is that an observer on the plane would measure what's known as its proper length of 71 metres. An observer in another inertial reference frame, like the stationary observer on Earth, would measure a shorter length. This phenomenon is known as length contraction, and a contracted length as measured by the stationary observer can be calculated using this equation, L dashed is the contracted length measured by an observer in a different inertial reference frame than the object being measured. L is the proper length measured by an observer in the same inertial reference frame as the object being measured. In other words, someone on the plane. V is the speed of the plane here, and C is the speed of light. In some questions, we might be told the actual speed of the object in meters per second, but since we're being given a fraction of the speed of light, then we can substitute this into the equation as V over C. So, the length measured by the stationary observer is 71 times the square root of 1 minus 0 0.8 squared, which works out to be 42.6 metres. How the observer is going to measure this with a tape measure, I've no idea, but that's our answer. 
to two significant figures, that's 43 metres. Finally, this is B part three. One of the students states that the clocks on board the plane will run slower when the plane's travelling at relativistic speeds. Explain whether or not this statement's correct. The student's talking about another consequence of special relativity known as time dilation, when time actually slows down in a moving inertial reference frame relative to a stationary observer. The only problem is that the student hasn't mentioned who's observing the clock, whether it's someone on the plane or someone in another inertial reference frame, like the stationary observer on Earth. In other words, the frame of reference hasn't been stated. Because of this, there are actually three possible answers to this question. We could say the statement's correct if observed by the stationary observer, who's in a different reference frame than the clock. We could, though, say that the statement is not correct if observed by someone on the plane, like one of the students, since they're in the same inertial reference frame as the clock. The other option is to write, it's not possible to say whether the statement is correct or not because the frame of reference hasn't been stated. This certainly is an odd question because it's not often that three seemingly different answers are all accepted. Still, if you've got a good grasp of special relativity, then you'll see why this is the case. Why the physics students can't just discuss the goings-on of the latest reality show, I've no idea. But there you go. And that's us for another video. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.